Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jess Davis and I'm the teaching liaison librarian who assists the Newcastle Law School. And today I'm joined by Jenny Scalando, who's going to be helping out with the chat. Um, she's the research liaison librarian for the Newcastle Law School. So if you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to pop them into the chat and Jenny will be able to answer them or will interrupt the session to answer them throughout. I'm just going to start today's session with an acknowledgement of country. So I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of Awabakal country, the land where I am today at New Space in Newcastle. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of other lands where the university has a presence, the Darkenjung, Biripai, Waramai, Wanarua and Eora nations. I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and extend this acknowledgement to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. So this webinar is going to introduce you to the new Westlaw AU platform. Uh, we changed to the platform at the beginning of this year and it has quite a different interface. So we thought that we'd do this webinar to show off the new features and how it differs from the old platform. This session will be best suited to those who have used the old platform interface, uh, but uh, even if you haven't, I'd still suggest that you stay on the webinar because uh, you may learn a few things. So for the most part, I'll be showing the actual database during this session, but before we jump in, I'll quickly go over some of the key features of the new platform. Uh, and just a quick note, at the library, we're we refer to the old Westlaw AU platform as Westlaw Classic. And for today, I will refer to the new platform as just Westlaw. Uh, so when I say Westlaw Classic, I'm referring to the old interface. And when I say Westlaw, I'm referring to the new Westlaw. So the key features that are available. So we've got natural legal language and predictive text uh, slash suggested results. So what this means that when using the global search bar in Westlaw, it has natural language with predictive text. It's very similar to Westlaw Classic, but it does have a couple more options. We also have overview searching. This is quite different from Westlaw Classic. When you're searching from the home page, there's no specification as to content type yet. So when you search uh, from the homepage, you'll search across all content. You'll then be taken to an overview page, which, take, which gives you the options to break down uh, the content types that you can then browse through. We also have a really big change with the change from first point, which was the case cider in Westlaw Classic to key site and also to key numbers. So Keysight, as mentioned, is a new case citator. Uh, it will tell you the reference to, references to the case. It will have the table of authorities and it will also have the flag. So they will tell you if the case has been rewarded or distinguished. Uh, and key numbers replace the Australian Digest. Uh, there's currently 83 topics in key numbers. And then when you go into each topic, it's broken into further subtopics and they're all assigned a number. There's also the advanced search template for each of the content types. However, it is not presented in the same way as Westlaw Classic, uh, where it was accessible on the left-hand side of the screen. Now it is embedded into the actual content types. And for the first time, Westlaw has all current Australian legislation and citing references. Uh, uh, so you'll be able to click onto the citing references and you'll be taken to them uh, for the actual provision of the act in case law and secondary sources. Uh, case law is still available via the new Westlaw along with journals. Uh, and the new thing is practice areas. So if you go into a practice area, uh, you can search across multiple content types such as case law, news and awareness, secondary sources and journals just within that actual practice area. There's also something called law summaries uh, that allow you to go to get a succinct answer to a legal query by typing the question into the search bar. And finally, there's also reading mode for secondary sources. So it acts a bit like an e-reader. So it enables you to uh, read through the secondary sources in a little bit more of an intuitive way. So I'm gonna jump straight into the new Westlaw platform so we can have a look at how all of these things look within them. So the easiest way to access the new Westlaw platform is via the library homepage. 
Uh, so if you go to that and then you scroll down to access and our list of databases, which is available there. And then going to W and scrolling down to Westlaw AU. Sometimes with the new Westlaw platform, it can take a little bit to load. Um, so I'd recommend being patient as sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to kick into gear. So we'll start with the first key feature, which is natural legal language and predictive text plus su suggested results. So this is now the global search bar, which comes up on the uh, main page. And then if you type anything into that, so I'll do a stuffle, you can see that it's got predictive text and it is giving me suggestions uh, for the keyword that I've typed in. So to begin with, it's giving me uh, some questions. So what is estoppel by representation, by conventioning equity? Uh, and then it is also suggesting various sources. So I can go straight into legislation from here, and I can also go into secondary sources from there as well. If I was to type in something like the Commonwealth Law Report, you can see that I am given the ability to jump straight into the content page of the Commonwealth Law Report, and I can click directly into that and uh, browse throughout the report from there. And then probably the easiest way for you to see it with all the options is if I type in New South Wales law. And you can see from here that it's giving me not only suggestions, but also cases, legislation, secondary sources and government and regulatory materials. So that is a natural legal language and predictive text. Uh, and then it, all, I can demonstrate the overview searching as well. So to do the overview search, rather than clicking one of the links throughout this drop down menu, I can instead type my word in there and then do a direct search. And it gives me an overview of that keyword. So I have on the left hand side cases, the key numbers, legislation, secondary sources, and I can click in through them through there and then keep clicking down there. So that is the overview searching. With the law summaries, so they're a way for you to ask a question. Uh, and find out a really simple, easy answer. And the way that you would do that would be to put it in the global search bar. And then if you type in something like, uh, what is the definition of habeas corpus? You can click on that. And it gives you a simple answer that you can read to get a bit of a definition, but it also gives you links uh, to where it's got that information. So you can read it in a larger context, as well as gives you a bit of an overview with the cases, the key numbers, legislation and secondary sources, if you would need to click through uh, and get a little bit more context about the initial question that you've asked. That brings us then to the new case citator, key site, which is replaced first point. So there's a couple of ways that you can search for cases and access key site. So you can just type in a case citation up here in the global search bar. And access it via there it'll come up in the suggested results and then you can click onto it and access the case directly. Or you can search by content type and choose to go into cases. 
you can browse or you can type your citation up there or you can access the advanced search template, which if you're familiar with the old case citator first point, you probably are more familiar with searching this way. Uh, this is the one uh, way of searching that reflects most uh, what key site used to do. Uh, so I would scroll down and type my citation down in here. And you don't need to include any brackets when you're typing in the citation. You can just type it straight like that and then press enter. And then it has come up here. So I would click onto it. And then you can see that I'm in the key citator because it has a little note here that says powered by key sites. So a uh, big difference uh, with the new Westlaw is that it defaults the view to the medium neutral citation. So this one in particular is the High Court of Australia version. Uh, if you want to switch between the different versions, another difference is that you're unable to click on the citations at the top. What you would need to do instead would be to use the other versions option here. And this gives you the option to see the Commonwealth Law Reports as well as the other Law Reports versions. And you can click into there. And it'll come up with that version. Uh, if you wanted to download the PDF of the case, you can do that by clicking the original image option there. That will automatically generate a PDF uh, for you to download and save. And then within this, you have the options to see any sort of negative treatment. You've got links to citing references, both cases and secondary sources. You have the table of authorities. And then you also have the little flag there and the flags throughout. Along with key site, there's also what they call key numbers. So key numbers are available again in content type and they're just a different way of browsing uh, for different cases. So key numbers are assigned to cases and I believe other content as well to give you an idea of what sort of subject area the case is about. Uh, so if I was to click on key number 32 estoppel, for example, I can click on that and then it breaks it down into further subtopics. So I can really be quite specific about what I'm looking for. So I can click onto that one there. And you can see that I have got cases that are related uh, to that particular key number. So it's just a different way of finding cases in particular if you don't know of a citation of a case um, that's related to the topic that you're researching, it's another way of browsing through them. Okay. And then we'll move on to content type searching. Hi Jess, we've just got mm -hmm. one question. Uh, and that is, what is the neg what does the negative site mean? I believe it's referring to if a case has been given negative treatment uh, by another case that's used it. Is that your understanding of it as well, Jenny? Mm, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the other way of searching is by searching content types. So uh, rather than doing an overview search and finding it that way, you can narrow it down to content type and then do a search. Uh, so I've already shown you how to search by cases. So if I wanted to say search by secondary sources, I could click into secondary sources. And then I can either choose to browse by type. So if I'm particularly looking for journal articles, I can click onto that. 
uh, by jurisdiction. So if I'm only looking for secondary sources about law in New South Wales, for example, I could click on that or federal, I could click on federal or by practice area down there. Uh, very similarly to searching for cases, you can either choose to use the simple search and type your keywords into there, or you can use the advanced option if you would like a few more options for searching. And it gives you the option to search by keyword, or if you know of a title or searching for say particular legislation as well, you could type it in there. When you're searching within secondary sources, uh, you could look for something like wrongful life. And you still have the filter options that pop up on the left hand side that you can use to limit your search down by jurisdiction, publication type, publication name, practice area, author, etc. Uh, you can also search in forms and precedents as well. If you need anything from there, you're given the option to search by practice area or by publication. Uh, so if I wanted to look in banking and financial services, then I can click through to the publications and then download anything I need from there. And it gives me the option to download uh, the form and I'm able to fill it in. There's also the newsroom that's available, which is under the specialty areas section uh, that you can search through if you're looking for any media resources. Uh, so it gives you the option to either see what's most popular and then you can also see the newsroom index. which again, sometimes takes a little bit to load. Uh, and then you can browse through and you can see all of the publications that we have available in the newsroom index. Something that I did wanna point out, which is a major difference between Westlaw Classic and the new Westlaw is that Westlaw Classic omitted all of the results uh, that weren't part of our current subscription. Uh, so when searching in the new Westlaw, you may find that you get results back from items that are not actually covered uh, in full text format within our subscription. So if you wanted to browse through everything that we actually hold, you would go to the little person up here, the profile and sign in, and then click on subscription. And then you can see everything that we have access to via the University of Newcastle uh, alphabetized in a list. Uh, if we don't subscribe to it, it has a little note uh, next to it within the results list that'll tell you that we don't subscribe to it. Uh, if we don't, I recommend checking the other law databases to see if we have it. And if we still don't, uh, then you would use uh, one of our interlibrary loan or copy services to be able to access it. So, and then we can move on to searching by practice area. So from this main page, we have the content types, and then you also have access to the practice areas from here. So as mentioned before, we have got uh, the ability to click into various practice areas. So if I wanted to look, let's say in health, I can click onto health. And it's giving me the option to either search within just legislation or just secondary sources, or I can search in just uh, both of those and do a search maybe for COVID.
and I'll get back results in both of those areas. So both in legislation and secondary sources. And I've obviously used too specific of a keyword because I've only got two results that have come back. Uh, were there any more questions at the moment, Jenny? Yes, there's one yep. that's come through. Uh, is there a policy search that shows policies developed from legislation? Hmm. I don't know about that one, actually. Have you seen one, Jenny? No, I'm just looking. It could possibly be a keyword. If you knew what the policy was, mm. you could possibly um, type in the keyword for policy. We mm. might need to get back to you on that one. So yeah, whoever that might. was, if you could put in um, a, an email link in the question and answer and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, so if there's no more questions at the moment, uh, we can move on to using the database uh, to personalize it to your own needs. Uh, so there's a couple of different options that we have available for you to do that. So first we have favorites. So when I go to each content type, so if I go into cases, for example, from this page uh, where I have the browse functionality, I have the ability to add it to favorites. So if I click on that and then select to save it to my favorites location, it will appear down in this section here in the, the favorites section and it saves it there. So I can choose to click on to that and it will take me directly to that. So if you have a very specific page that you would like to favorite and you want to keep track of it all in the one spot, you have that option to personalize it. Uh, I believe that you can also search within selected. So for example, if I select cases and then was to type in there, that's another search option for me and it will search only within the cases. Or if I had, um, maybe I could add forms and precedents as well down there. Uh, you can add that to favorites. And you can choose to search either in forms or precedents or within cases, or you could do both if you have something that you would need to search in multiple different areas at one time. There's also preferences, which is available again via the little person icon. It's just underneath subscription in preferences and you have the ability to uh, limit your jurisdiction automatically. You have options to change how your searches are run. You have the option to email a detailed session summary when you're signed out and choose what sort of format that you would like that summary available in. Uh, you can choose to deselect any of the features. So for example, you can deselect the best portion option and the law summaries. Uh, you can choose to change how, when you download a document, how it's downloaded, and you also have the help uh, option there as well to uh, deselect any sort of keyboard instructions that have come up. There's also something called folders. So you can choose to create a folder of content that you found and then be able to go back and access it. So in all of, uh, in everybody's sign-in, they will have a default folder that comes up as their first name and then research. So this is a default folder that I have that says Jessica's research, or you can choose to create a folder as well. So when you've found a document that you're, that you're wanting to save, so I'll do another search for wrongful life and find a secondary source. Ooh, see, that's a case of where I don't have access to it via my subscription. So I will do that search again. See if I can access more. Okay, 
And then I have the option to, actually I've accessed this item before, so this isn't a great example. I'll see if I can find another one. That one's already saved to one of my folders and I've already annotated it, so it's not particularly helpful. But when I access something, I have the option to add it to a folder. I possibly already have this one saved, but I can choose to save it to my secondary sources folder and save. And then I can go back to the home page and go to the folders tab. And I have secondary sources selected, and then I can access that article again from that folder. If I found another article and I don't want to save it to that folder, I do also have the options for creating a new folder as well. So I'll use this as an example. So I have the option to select new folder and at this point I can name it whatever I like. So I could say journal articles, or you could name it perhaps your assessment title, or if you're writing an article for a journal, uh, whatever the article title is or literature reviews, and then you would press save. Then I can select that and then press save. And again, it'll be available from the home page. within journal articles. Once you've saved an item, you can also choose to go through and annotate it. So you do have a couple of options for annotating. So the annotate option is here. And what you can do is you can either add a document level note. So this note will appear at the top of the article. So it could be something like, um, great article for first assessment. And then that will stay at the top. Or you can go through and identify actual sentences uh, or sections of the text. So if you highlight them, they will come up. Hmm, why is it not working? There we go. Uh, and you can choose to either add a note, you can select whatever color you like and you can add a note in there. So best for um, body of assessment and save. And then that will save and you can see that it's been stays highlighted and you can access the note by accessing that little question box or you can choose just to highlight it if you wanted to go through and pick a color and then that will stay highlighted. Once you've added annotations, you do have the option to share it. Um, when you've shared it, I believe within your contacts list, um, I'm not too sure how it looks for non-library staff, but you can search by name in there and then choose to share it uh, with a colleague or with uh, a fellow student, for example. So that's how to annotate a document. And then now when I'm accessing this document via the folder option from the front page, these annotations will stay there. The other great way of customizing as well is that you can create a custom page. So this is similar to favorites. Uh, where you would identify things that you want to add uh, that you can access quickly, but custom pages enables you to add uh, a whole bunch of different areas of the database uh, to a single page um, that you can theme. So for example, I could theme it as maybe literature review that I would have to do. And I can press custom page. And from here, I can add content. So if I select manage page, 
I can add a content section. And I could say um, initial research, maybe. And save, and then I can add content. So I could choose to maybe add cases to it, um, or I could choose to do government and regulatory materials and press save. Um, and then I can choose to edit page and I can choose to delete those items from it as well. If I wanted to add another content section, I can do that as well. And I might say, you know, further research. And add content. And within here as well, I can choose to go from just regular content types, specialty areas, practice areas. I can click on the link to the hyperlinks and find within them, so legislation within evidence, for example, or secondary sources, uh, any sort of featured publications that are available or any tools such as a newsroom. Uh, and then I can select to add them there. I might choose to add, let's say legislation. And now I can go into this custom page and I can access all of the things that I've identified that are important for what research I'm doing from the one area. And you can group them together depending if you wanted to group them based on the assessment that you have coming up or if you're writing an article, for example, um, you can group them all together. And then if you go back to the home page, you can access the custom page via that tab and it will be available there. So does anybody have any more questions or anything else that they would like to see? That's covered mostly the new features that are available by Westlaw, but I'm happy to go over anything uh, else that anybody would like to have a look at. There's no other questions that have come in at all, Jess. Okay, no problem. Okay, we might call it there then, um, unless we have any last minute questions that have come in. No problem. Uh, no, Ruth, Ruth just let us know that it was wonderful. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and people great. will have access to the video for this, mm -hmm. won't they? The, the recording. Yes, they <laughs> will. my age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so if you could take a moment to answer the poll that has just come up, uh, uh, answer those questions, give us a little bit of feedback about what you've learnt today, um, and it would be great. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, the recording will be sent out to you after the session.